If you're a grower that has easy to propagate plants, then you're well on your way to growing your own gifts this holiday season. In this video, we're gonna show you just how easy it is to take broken off stems, cuttings, um, or even pops from easy to propagate plants and to put them into nice little containers that in just a few weeks time will be awesome gift options for the people in your life. Absolutely. So there's three types of plants, you know, you can start working with. The first being a plant that has roots already on it, like this Christmas cactus. You can often find these if you've got some house plants growing around a lot of times, your branches will fall down and they'll root themselves. And basically it's a cutting, which we'll show you later, that's already taken itself, which is great. You know, roots to work with. It's very safe. The other option, very similar, would be a pop. So this is a, an aloe plant that you know popped out from underneath from the root system of its mother and uh we just pulled it away and we're going to use this so very similar as this guy and the final one is this inch plant right here which was a cutting we just clipped off a, a branch you know right below the node and this certain plants do really well others are a little more difficult this is a great choice to grow from uh, cuttings. You know, you do have to make sure the humidity stays up until they root, but those are the three options we're gonna to demonstrate today. All right, so let's get started. You only need a few things. Obviously your plants, um, whatever you have that you think will take um, in these little pots, um, some sort of small container. We're using these ones, uh, one, because we've just found that they're really nice looking as, as a gift option, and also they're extremely functional, and we like that they have a little saucer um, for when you, you know, overwater a little bit. Um, and then of course you'll need some soil uh, to put into the plant, uh, excuse me, to put into the pot and of course some water. And there's a few other optional things you can add as well. So if you're feeling fancy, I, I suggest adding some microbes, both, you know, we actually soak these plants in water with microbes, our microbe mix, which is called Microbe Feed Plus. There's other options out there. And then if you want to cover the top layer, both from, for an aesthetic benefit and also as a mulch layer kind of that'll keep the soil moisture captured within. Uh, rice hulls are amazing, offer a nice light color. If you want to do a nice dark cover, you know, yeah, you can use something like biochar, which is all black, which can be really pretty and, you know, create a really striking uh, pot for the plant. All right, nice. So should we get doing it? Let's do this. Okay. So first, I mean, this is gonna be as easy as it gets. So we're just gonna put some soil in this adorable little pot. Um, so I'm gonna reach over you, sorry, Matt. Sure. Get this opened up. Oh, do you wanna tell them a little bit about what this oil is, why I fill it up? Sure, awesome. So the type of soil I would recommend for this sort of planting is something with very minimal fertilizer, uh, next to none. So in this, this mix, there's peat, cocoa, perlite, and a little bit of lime. So basically what's considered a soilless mix. There'll be a little, uh, very small amount of nutrients in uh, the micro P plus, but next to nothing, you know, once the roots are more established, you can start feeding them, but be really careful because adding a bunch of nutrients or putting them in nutrient rich soil will burn them and the plant will die and the bottom will rot out. So there's a balance, yeah. <laughs> All right, awesome. So basically what I've done, um, if you can kind of see this, is I just filled the pot up pretty much all the way with soil, but then I just took my finger and, and made a little hole for where we're gonna put the transferred plant. Um, and so I'll, I'll start with our Christmas cactus. Uh, I'm actually gonna put both of them in here. Um, and then again, they have kind of these nice little established roots. They were previously in a pot that had biochar, so you can see the roots have kind of worked their way around that biochar. So we'll just pop that right in there with them. Now, one thing to note, um, the soil we're using is just slightly moist, not wet, but not bone dry. And why that's important, if it's soaking wet, you won't want to water and afterward, it can cause root rot and having a, a nice light um, soil like this allows some drainage but enough moisture to be retained. Right. One thing to note about this soil that is important is that it's slightly moistened. So if your soil is bone dry yeah. um, or too wet, that's gonna ca cause problems. If it's too dry, it's gonna be really dif difficult to actually get water to start taking, especially because the peat, ironically, like even though peat holds tons of water, when it's bone dry, it becomes really hydrophobic. And so you put the plant in, and even if you water all the way through, water will be coming out the bottom, the soil is still dry. So by having it slightly moistened, it allows you to water in, 
but if it's totally soggy and wet, you can lead to rot and it could also be really anaerobic and the plant won't have enough aeration. These are really small containers, so we don't want a really fast draining soil, but we do still want some drainage, especially while, where these are new rootings and new clippings. Yeah, the way I always like they use describe it when you were first telling me about this, it's like if you take a bone dry sponge and you try to clean up a mess on a counter, like water that has spilled, the sponge picks up almost nothing. It needs to be a little bit damp to create that suction of the water in. And so if you have a bone dry soil and you add water to it, it's like using that bone dry sponge. It just kind of goes right through. It's not, it's not doing that sucking um, up and that water retention yet. Um, so that, that's, you know, that's kind of the analogy that I love. Um, so I use a little bit of extra soil on top just to make sure my cactuses were standing up straight. Um, All right, so it's time to give this guy some water. So one thing I would uh, think about is if I try just pouring some water right in, it's going to cause some of the soil to splash out. It's really difficult. You won't get an even and consistent, you know, um, moisture in there and it can cause some compression. So what I like to do to get it started in particular, uh, the first time in water is, and this is with the micro feed, is I'm going to pour it into a mister. And again, if you don't have micro feed, straight water is fine. The beauty of microbe feeds is they have beneficial microbes inside, which can help the plant uptake nutrients and also help with root development. Um, so if you've got one, um, it's just an added bonus to help your plant get going and to colonize the soil with beneficial microbes that will help uh, to support uh, healthy growth. All right, so I'm just gonna, and I did this at a pretty dilute amount. So um, just gonna give it a little bit of a misting. And now it's gonna prevent the soil from compressing. It's it's gonna give it a nice, even distribution. Sorry, this mister is struggling. Let's hold this up, so. And it's nice, you can kind of make sure you're getting everywhere, getting that top nice and wet. Kind of keep going so until, good. I don't know if you can see. See that? All right. And honestly, you can, I can feel the pot getting heavier. It's nice and heavy. And I'm gonna do this until I start seeing it come up the bottom, which is happening. And I'll kind of, you know, move it around because I know there's water inside. Hopefully that gets it moving. And then I'd say that's good. And I'm probably gonna mist again tomorrow lightly. Now you don't wanna keep it soaking wet. You don't want the soil to compress. That's really where you'll start getting some root rot. But if you can keep the moisture going while the roots develop out, you'll have a good situation. Sounds great. So the big things are, if you can't keep it in a humid environment, make sure that you're misting somewhat regularly to keep those roots moist. Cause if they dry out, that's it. It's it. Yep. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and there's barely any roots. So, yeah. you know, but if you overwater, it'll cause rot. For this guy, I think a little rice hulls on top will look nice. So let's do that. And it'll keep that moisture in, which is nice. And again, rice hulls are a nice to have. Um, they help to trap moisture in um, on the lower layer of the soil below, which creates a nice moist environment for new roots to grow. They also reflect light and heat away from those new growing roots, um, which can be really nice. And they actually can deter uh, pests that live in the soil because most pests that live in soil like a damp soil to lay their eggs in. Um, and the rice hulls are hydrophobic, which means they repel water and they stay dry. Um, but with all that being said, it's just a nice to have. If you don't have them, you certainly don't have to add them on top. Yeah. Uh, but they kind of look really good. Yeah, I'm gonna wipe this guy down. <laughs> Make it look a little more present like. Yeah. Make it look clean. Look at that. I mean, it looks great. I mean, who wouldn't want that for Christmas? All right. I, should I start the yellow? Yeah. Okay. So I did same start for the yellow. Just put some dirt in here, or excuse me, soil in here. Also create a little hole um, to put the yellow in. You can see, you can see actually this is really cool. This is where the pup was connected to the mother plant. So we just broke it off right there, but it also has a couple roots established, which is exactly what we want. I'm gonna carefully kind of put those roots in and then make sure all the roots are under the soil layer. When you're planting a plant like this, um, you want to make sure you're not putting the dirt up onto the actual um, kind of fleshy part of the plant because you can get rot there. So you wanna cover the soil, but not cover kind of the, the bottom part of the, the actual where the, you know, in this case, the aloe leaves are coming out. Did you want to add something to that? Oh, no, I was going to say, I don't, um, if you wanted to move it here. Oh, yeah, I'm not No, no, it's great. Oh, and I have a little saucer right now, which we don't need quite yet. 
Okay. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit more dirt just to make this, oh my gosh, this guy looks so good in here. This guy looks so good. What I love about aloe is they just, when they're happy, they just produce these pups all the time and they're just the nicest plants at any size. Um, I just love aloe, okay. All right, oh, perfect. Um, great, so next up is to uh, water, which we're gonna do again by misting. And um, in this case, yeah, add some biochar if you want. Yeah, I was gonna say. No, it's uh, great, yeah, go for it. Okay. I, mean, I like really to do it water. while it's watering. You kind of can wiggle around, and make sure you know you don't want yeah. it to compress the soil, but you want it to stop wiggling. That that lets you know it's kind of in place. All right, spraying the sides down to clean them a little. Oh yeah. All right. And put some biochar on top because perlite doesn't look that pretty. I don't think. <laughs> So for this last one, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. This is the one from a cutting, and I'm gonna give it, uh, expose a number, uh, you know, some of the stem. So I'm gonna pull some of these leaves off. Get that going like that. And then once it's in place, I'm gonna try to hold it without snapping it, which can be tricky, but if I can just keep it like that, and then I'm gonna add the soil in on that. That's more than we need. That's okay though. All right. And that hopefully will bounce right back. And you know what? I got this other guy right here. And so I'm gonna just put him right on the top. Let me pull this, this leaf off. Just put him in. So that way it'll look pretty. And they'll, these guys take really easily, so I'm not too worried they won't. And I'm gonna do some rice hulls on this one too. And I'm actually gonna add the rice hulls before you can do it either way but it's actually nice when you water in on top of rice holes it it creates um, a nice little um, trickling effect from that from the plant from the into the soil from watering so you don't have to worry as much about damaging you know the soil while while misting mister now All right, so, well, looks like we're wrapped up now, and these look beautiful, I gotta say, and um, Mandy, I just wanted to give you something. I got an early Christmas gift for you. <laughs> I love it. This is actually my favorite one. That was very, very nice of you. And you know what my favorite part is? What? You made it yourself what with that? love. Oh, thank you. My favorite type of gift. Uh, thank you, you. You did that one, didn't you? That well, I mean, it was a labor of love between the two of us. Until next time, like and subscribe. Bye, everybody. Bye.